Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here in Germany, often tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I have Springbank, 10 year old PX cask. <gasps> Sherry Wood, Pedro Jimenez, cask matured, age 10 years. Campbelltown single malt scotch whiskey, 55%. Whiskey base number 215605. This was distilled in July of 2012 and it was bottled on the 7th of October 2022. So 10 years of age, I just mentioned that, seven years in refill bourbon barrels and three years in fresh Spanish oak Pedro Jimenez hogsheads. Hogsheads are basically seasoned casks. We, they, the sherry industry does not use hogsheads. Sorry. All right, so um, I paid 75 pounds for this. So I won the Campbelltown Society lottery, yay! So there are 10,800 bottles of this worldwide. All right, so um, bottle code 22 slash 201. So that's the 201st bottling of the year 2022 for Springbank. And if I go over to Whiskey Base, I will see the lowest price at the moment is 295 euros. And the average price, according to the calculation of Whiskey Base, is 528 euros for this bottle. Um, I get angry, sad, and disgusted all at the same time when I see that number. Because I know that Springbank earned on this bottle 75 pounds, deducting sales tax, deducting alcohol tax. Every other person in between that goes up to 500 plus euros, they're earning off the backs of Springbank. And I don't think that's great. <laughs> All right, so what am I going to compare it to? So I have, oh look, it's red as well. It should look like this. This is the 12 year old. This is batch 22 of the Springbank 12 year old with 55.4% ABV, 50% sherry cask, 50% bourbon casks. That is going to be whiskey base number 183244. Now I paid, I think 85 euros for this originally in Germany. Now the lowest price I can find is 199. And the average price for this bottling is around 360 euros, according to Whiskey Base. Also a disgustingly stupid price for this bottle. All right, so um, Springbank is at the moment, I'm going to say the most sought after whiskey of Scotland. It used to be Macallan. No, I personally think it's now Springbank. And many of the people who drank Springbank for, I'm going to say 20 some years, can no longer find it. Many of the people who have tried Springbanks a few times are utterly dumbstruck by the prices people, retailers are asking for this product. It's just not right. Now, I actually visited the distillery in May of 2022, so just last year. And I must admit that I was also at the Glen um, Gael Distillery, Kilkeren. I like that one better. I it was it was quiet season there. Don't forget, most of the year is quiet season for Glen Gael. Um, so for Kilkeren, um, I liked the way it was set up. I liked the building. I liked the distillery. We were there first. Had the same tour guide for both places for Springbank and for Glen Gael. Um, we had a break. I loved the mash tun. The mash tun is not the device used in distilling the mash tun at, at Springbank. At the Springbank Distillery is actually their local now, um, I'm going to call it pub uh, uh, event center. You have uh, the, one of the best, if not the best possibility to do flights there at a reasonable price. Beautifully made. Um, the bar is it's just fantastic. The people that work there are so friendly, so nice, so helpful. Um, if you are in uh, Campbelltown and you do not stop by the Mashton at least once while you're there, I don't care if you go to Glen Scotia, I don't care if you go to uh, Springbank Distillery or Glen Gael, you have to go to the Mashton. 
That's, that is a command from Whiskey Jason. Please go there at least once. It's awesome. I think it opened 20, was it the, the early 2022, late 2021? It's fairly recent. So many of us that had been there before um, have never seen it before. It's really, really worth the time. During my visit at the, during the tour of the Springbank Distillery, I must admit, I was not, sorry, for, you can quit watching now, you can unsubscribe, you can do whatever you want to. I was not impressed. I found the entire place, it felt, for me, dirty, uh, old, run down. Um, just watching the mash tun, and I was like, oh, no. It, it was like a barn, like a farm um, from 1930s. And um, I had kept on thinking, I saw all these gears and everything. It's like, I wonder where that machine room character, oh, now I kind of might know. I, I, I'm not sure. Um, but um, this is Springbank. So this is two and a half times distilled. Our Hazel Burns three times distilled. Long Row is only twice distilled. And um, the very, very interesting thing about Springbank, and I'm going to quote here our whiskey, I'm sorry, our malt whiskey yearbook 2023, is they have a capacity of 750,000 liters. I started thinking about that. It's like, what does that mean, capacity? Does capacity mean we take a look at the stills and we calculate with the wash stills and the spirit stills? What is the theoretical maximum amount if we ran those stills 24-7? Is that the capacity of a distillery? Because there are more than just one type of bottleneck in a distillery. It can be the stills, but it could be theoretically the mill. Imagine you had a hammer mill and it could only run because of any reasons, maybe six hours a day or even six minutes a day, and then you could only have to repair it and so on. That could be your bottleneck. Or it could be the fermenters. How many distilleries have now added more fermenters so they can run three shifts a day and not just two shifts or one shift? That is a capacity bottleneck. And in the case of Springbank, if I understand everything correctly, their capacity bottleneck is definitely their malting floors. If they would not build a new distillery, if they would not build a new um, stills, if they would just build two more buildings with Molting floor capacity, they would actually be able to, I would say, maybe even double their capacity. Because now, at the moment, so 2022, 2023, they are running at 30% capacity. All right, so there's a theoretical capacity of 750,000 liters of alcohol. And last year of 2022, and that was not a COVID year in Scotland, actually, they produced basically here um less than 300,000 liters. There was 220,000 liters of Springbank, 30,000 um liters of Long Row and Hazelburn each. All right. So, a Springbank double distilled 12 to 15 ppm, which means they take 6 hours of peat smoke and then 30 hours of hot air. The Long Row they take 48 hours of peat smoke and the Hazelburn they do themselves with absolutely no um, no peat whatsoever. So Long Row has a peat of between 50 and 55. All right. So I do commend um, Springbank for offering auctions. I won their society bottling last year, did a bottle share. This year I entered and won the Pedro Jimenez, the PX. Thank you very much. I shared it. I did a bottle share. So what I did is I took three sale samples. Um, oh, let's talk about the price real quick. What do I actually pay for a bottle of Springbank PX by the time it reaches my doorstep? So, 75 pounds. I have to pay 27 pounds shipping, which turns into 102 pounds, which turns into me, into euros, as I live in Germany, 117 euros and 37 cents. At least that's what my credit card was billed. All right, then um, to reach Germany, I am Scotland is no longer in the European Union, so I have to pay customs and taxes, as well as a shipping fee for DHL for them to process the, all the customs documents. Um, that is another 43 euros and 19 cents. So we're talking about 160 euros. So 75 pounds turns into 160 euros. So I take the pound, I times it by a 2.311111, and that's what I'm going to pay in euros. Wow. 
All right, so um, 160 euros is what I paid for this bottle. I did a bottle share, three CLs, which means there was 23 of those little samples. One belongs to me, so I have four CLs. The other 22, so 66 CLs, I sold each for 10 euros to my super fans. Super fans are people who support me on Patreon or on my German channel at YouTube with up to just one or two euros a month. So $1.99 on uh, YouTube and one uh, euro 19, 19% VAT um, on uh, Patreon. And they had the possibility to get a sample and the bottle was very, very quickly then also distributed to the people who wanted it. So that's what I always do. I open every single bottle up that I get at the spring bank and I um, share it with those people out there in Germany that are fans that did not have the opportunity themselves to get a bottle. So I'm, I'm doing good for the whiskey community in Germany. Yay. All right. So 10 years of age, seven in used cast, three in fresh Spanish oak PX casks. Let's nose it. All right. Yes, I do get Pedro Jimenez. For me, that's raisins and prunes. I do get a tiny little bit of a European, I would say European oak. I can't differentiate between Hungarian, um, French, or Spanish oak on the nose. So I'm just going to say European oak, which is a dark chocolate, almost a mocha um, type of moment there. And I do get a tiny little bit of a uh, smokiness. Now, for me, the smokiness is more of a wood smoke rather than a peat smoke. And um, when I taste this and when I nose this, the first initial boom in my head, if this was totally blind, I would have said this is from a, at least in Germany, a famous German distillery um, called Ellsburn um, from Anna Buchholz. And I would say that it's fairly, fairly cask um, PX Sherry Forward here. And I would say, and there's a, she actually uses a certain type of wood smoke for her barley as well. And I would have went, that's that. I, I would have thought this is a German whiskey. And uh, which, which uh, turning the tables a little bit is one of the best compliments I can make to a German distillery, confusing them with Springbank. But on the other hand, it's also the question I want to ask you is, what is your Springbank alternative? All right, so if I go over here to the Springbank 10, uh, I think Whiskey in the Spring and Jeffrey actually did here um, a Springbank alternative video. I would go with the Ben Robach 10. That would be my alternative for this, all right? So if we have the 15 year of age, um, I would actually go here um, for the Ben Romach 15 year. Um, we have some single casts over here in Germany from Ben Romach every once in a while. They're fantastic. The 12 year old um, in cast strength, I'm not really sure. I would go for a, oh, let's go for this one. Um, here we have the Highland Park. Every once in a while they have um, exclusive or they have their um, cast strength here, um, Highland Park and these nice little um, bags here. That would be my alternative to the 12 year old for, the, for that. Um, for the 10 year old PX, I have no idea. I'm sorry, um, but most of us don't get the chance to drink any Springbank um, 18 or 21 or 25. If you want to watch someone um, enjoy their Springbank, go over to Whiskey Mystery with Phil and Deepa. What, what they've done with Springbank is awesome. We were within, I would say, 800 meters of each other at, in Campbelltown. They were, and they had COVID. They were isolating from the world and I was on then one day later I was actually on the ferry over to Isla and they wrote Jason Jason I just saw your video you're in Campbelltown it's like I was oh, we could have met up outside I brought home from that trip COVID <laughs> I think I got in Jorah but it might have been Campbelltown a couple days before that so who knows who knows so wouldn't have mattered anyway so all right good so let's go back here on the nose now, this one is, you can really, I get a little bit more of the sulfur here. Tiny, tiny whiff of the sulfate, sulfur. Um, think match, match sticks. Um, this has much less of the sherry influence. Even though it's 50% matured in refill on sherry and 50% in ex-bourbon. And this has more honey here. Interesting enough. 
So let's try it. 55 versus 55.4. Both a red label. 12 versus 10. Cheers. Mm. The thing that really caught me off guard was the heat. Not the 55% heat, the youthfulness of that heat. Um, there's a lot of pepper in here. There's a lot of alcohol spirit going on here. I, I, I have the feeling that the seven years and those um, X, I mean, it was called oak casks, those X bourbon barrels, X, X refilled bourbon barrels. Um, yeah, they were fairly inactive. They weren't really doing that much. And so not much going on there. And the three years in the, um, now I'm getting a nice dark chocolate moment, that Spanish oak kicking in. Um, I do think the Pedro Jimenez is fairly well balanced. It's not overpowering that you don't taste anything else. But the Campbelltown funk is still there. But it is, there's a, there's a good thick layer of filter on top of that. Just think of maybe you put down a shovel in the, in the garden and there's snowed like three or four uh, inches, five, eight centimeters. And you can almost see the outline of what's underneath there. You can still feel the outline of the spring bank going on here. But that Pedro Jimenez, that PX, that, that three-year-old finish, or second maturation, um, really did um, a heavy influence on this. Very, very interesting. I'm going to go over here now to the 12-year-old and the 55.4%. Cheers. Mm hmm Exactly what I meant. There's a little bit of heat towards the end, but there's much, much more heat here. This has a more typical spring bank moment. Um, that machine room, that funk, a little bit of a... It's like my grandpa's tractor shop. Yeah, um, you'd go in there and you'd have that, like the lubrication and all that. I get that here. It's not... It's not a flavor, a flavor profile I yearn for. I know people go crazy about it, but it's just something that I can... I'm not going to be hunting any um, spring bank anytime soon. Um, this, is, this is a product that I just don't adore, and I know other people do. But I will buy a bottle. I will share the bottle. I will open it. I will give it away or even give people some samples sometimes. And... Um, um, do bottle shares, and so people have the enjoyment of actually participating in that. Um, yeah, now what I just did is I added water. I took it from 55 down to about 48%. So I'll cleanse my palate real quick. If I were to choose between the two of these, I would go for the 12-year-old batch 22 over here. Um, this is just not doing it for me, to be honest. This is a sea whiskey. Value for money, as I said, I bought it directly from the distillery. I'm still paying 160 euro, uh, euros because of all the taxes I pay. See that stamp? That stamp was not um, canceled. So I paid uh, the alcohol tax in the UK and I paid the alcohol tax in Germany as well, unfortunately. Um, I had to pay shipping. I had to pay, it was 27 pounds to ship the bottle. So all these different prices here do make a big, big, big uh, difference and add up. So would I buy this again? Never. All right. So the value for money is for me almost like a D. And if I'm going to pay 500 euros for this, it's I kind of make an F minus. I think people are just crazy to pay 500 plus euros for a local barley Springbank 10 or even the Pedro Jimenez 10 years of age. Especially since the distillery is not getting the money. The, the money is going to all these distributors and all the people in between here. The middleman. He's cashing in on this. Not, not Springbank itself. So it was up to me. Dear Springbank, double your prices. 150 go for it. You'd sell all 10,000 bottles immediately. And the most of the money would be with you. I don't think the secondary prices would double. Do you? I don't. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. 
okay, by 48%, it actually is almost a sweet spot. Um, interesting enough, the woody, the smokiness, I'm going to say the woody smokiness, um, comes out a bit more, is more apparent. And there's more of a creaminess and more of a luxurious moment going on here. The 55% was way too hot. And the 48% actually tamed it and made it into a, a product that I would go up to even a C plus, maybe even on a very, very good, nah, I would never give it a blind to B minus, so C plus. Um, but that, that, that's a balanced product from the beginning to the end, except for the heat. All right, so question of the day, I will, I will repeat myself. What would be for you, for, um, for Springbank, a replacement product? I mentioned Ben Riemach, Ben Riemach. Wow, that was Ben Riach and Ben Romach, Ben Riemach. Also Ben Romach, I mentioned twice. I mentioned Highland Park once. Um, what other products would be for you a good replacement for Springbank? Since it's for many, many of us unattainable, unavailable, and just way too scarce and expensive. So what would you buy instead? Please write it down in the comments and help other people find things, alternatives out there. Whisk, um, uh, Ralphie has his alternatives and what I'm going for is the Spring Bank alternatives. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for liking, subscribing, sharing, and telling other people about this crazy guy over in Germany tasting whiskey you, you might not ever see. Bye-bye.